hard life. So before we watch the video, I wanted to read this one little excerpt here that was uh, um, at the beginning of chapter nine. And it, it says, God created the world out of nothing. And as long as we are nothing, he can make something out of us. And that's a quote from Martin Luther. I thought that was, it, I, that's the first time I've ever heard that. Have you ever heard that one before? You have? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he created everything around us, the sun, the moon, the stars, all the animals, everything, the trees, all the flora, out of absolutely nothing literally out of thin air. So if we become nothing, we become a conduit then for him to use us in ways that we might never have dreamed possible, doing things we never thought mm -hmm. we would ever do, being around people that we never thought we'd ever be around, and not, not necessarily something that you can it's at the very beginning of chapter nine it's on the first page but being something that god wants you to be or god wants you to do he's not going to fight you he only wrestled one man in the bible that i ever read about he's not going to wrestle you to the ground to try to get you to let your will go and let his will step in even in the ugly things you know, sometimes we think, I don't know why I'm having to go through this. Or, I don't know why God's making me do this. Or I don't know why God's put me in this situation. You know, I'll give you a, a firsthand example for me, smoking. I smoked. When I was younger, I smoked. And it started when I was in school. It was a way to, you know, kind of keep, I guess, keep myself away from something. I don't know. I knew it was wrong. You know, my mother didn't smoke. I knew it was wrong. But I still did it. And when I started thinking back, when I kind of circled back around and started thinking about God again, started thinking about you know Christ's sacrifice in the context that I understood it at the time, I started praying and asking God to help me stop smoking. And I would pray and I would pray and I would cry and I would pray some more and, and then I'd light up. Okay. I and I did. I mean, I'm fine. and I can say I know how you feel. Uh, well, I mean, it was it was one of those before you know before you had all this non-smoking areas. We didn't have any of that. We smoked right there. Yep. You know the doctor you walking walk in to the waffle house, house check and the cigarette in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. But you know the doctor walking in so to check the kids. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Teacher smoking. <laughs> I mean, it it was not. It wasn't it didn't have all the stigma that it had. But I knew it wasn't good for me. I knew that much. And I just so happened, I had been really, really stressed about it and just thinking, you know, God doesn't love me because he won't help me quit smoking and all this. And I happened to be listening to something on one of those AM preacher radio stations on the way home from work one day. And this old, he, he was old, you could tell he was old, preacher was preaching and he said, I'm going to say something to you folks out there that are addicted to them nicotine sticks. <laughs> and I was like, okay, here it comes. You know? And he's like, hey, y'all, you, you know, you work really hard and you do all kinds of stuff and you pray really hard and you think, you know, you think you got to do it and you think God's got to snap you. And, and he goes, and you say, Jesus, Jesus, take those cigarettes away from me. And he goes, but Jesus didn't put it in your mouth to begin with. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I got a face. And it was true. You know, did he love me while I was still smoking? Absolutely. Love me no matter what. But what I could do for myself, I was asking him to override my will because it was my will that was putting a cigarette in my mouth and lighting one. I was asking him to override my will, like knock me off my seat when he didn't put me in that seat to begin with. 
I put myself there. So I was, I had enough self-will or whatever to put myself in the seat, but I expected him to miraculously, you know, override that will and not, and take away the nicotine addiction. And it was hard. It was really hard putting them down. But once I put them down that time, I never picked them up again. Oops. Because I gave in to God's will for me. I said, okay, I know it's not your will for me to smoke. It's my will for me to smoke. I've got to give you not my I'm ashamed to say what I smoke. Benson had this. You just drink Benson Marlboro. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember the, okay. the girly Virginia Slim. Virginia Slim. Virginia Slim. Virginia Slim. Like that's yeah. supposed to make you sexy. Uh, the little, you know. Yeah. I used <laughs> to smoke them. I know. But <laughs> I'm not, I need to give you my will for Benson and Hedges. And if I give you that will for Benson and Hedges, then whatever your will is for me, I have to accept. And if that means that I have to go through the horrible detox, which everybody that goes to smoke does go through detox. Mm -hmm. It is a drug. Don't let anybody tell you any different. If it wasn't, the FDA wouldn't be able to intervene uh, from the tobacco companies like they do. So that will, giving it to him, caused me to be able to bend into his will for me instead of me trying to control it myself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what I want to talk about real quick is bridges and i love all the bridges analysis here so if i go around the tape what's one word that comes to your mind when you think of the word bridge go ahead this is the first thing that pops into your mind you want me to come back to you yeah okay <laughs> a connection uh, what a connection connection what else <laughs> you want me to come back to you? <laughs> um, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I blank. Okay, did you think of one, Casey? Um, come back. Okay, <laughs> did you have one, Carolyn? Like a walkover. Walkover? Walkover, yes. That was mine too. Okay. How about you? Sorry. Me? It would be like to make friendship. So, um, binding. Binding. Would, yeah, would that be a yeah, good? That's what it makes me. Okay. Reach the other side. Reach the other side. Okay. Nine is crossover, which oh, yeah. the last three is. How about you, Ellen? <laughs> Got any that just pops into your mind when you think of a bridge? One I can jump off. <laughs> Sometimes you want to tell people to do that, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Did you think of anything, Kaylee? You went in the past? I was going to say combine. Combine? Okay. <laughs> combine. You know, I think bridges are such a deep analogy. If you look in the study guide, there's like multiple pages where there's different, you're, you're actually dissecting different things about bridges. But bridges are built. Mm -hmm. You do mm -hmm. have some instances of natural bridges. Like in music. Right? Yeah, or natural stone mm -hmm. bridges, bridges and things. I've, I've been a couple places where they've had what they refer to. There's a place called Natural Bridge, Virginia, and that's what it is. It's just a natural stone formation that's formed a bridge. Um, are, the, are the natural bridges always the strongest no. bridges? No. no. So let's talk about natural bridges. Do we have natural relationship bridges in our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Let's talk what, what are some. What's a natural bridge that we have in our life? Between your mother and father. Between your mother and father. Mm -hmm. A mother and daughter bridge. What other bridges are our your natural? Children. Your children. What other bridges? 
work bridges work you have relationships at work you have to build bridges you have to work together you have to carry over the bridge and sometimes have them carry back mm -hmm. over the bridge what else friendship friendship your siblings sibling bridges mm -hmm. you have we have relationship bridges all over the place right here in this building mm -hmm. you know we have some folks that we mesh with some folks that we don't mesh with does that make us bad people? Yeah. Does it make us unchristian? No. no. Does it make us um, less than what we should be? No. I don't think so. Unless it's a hostile relationship. Mm -hmm. And if it's a hostile relationship, that's problematic. And that, that needs to be looked at. Not everybody gets along with everybody. You just People's can't. personalities clash. Exactly. Their personalities clash. Their method of delivery is, is you know, not acceptable to some people. They're, sometimes people are put off by mannerisms. Sometimes people are put off by lack of manners. You know, mm -hmm. people are put off or they just don't click. They go up against each other. But they, they don't talk as magnets. Mm -hmm. They don't go together. Do you think that can ever change? Do you think if you have that feeling, I'm not talking about just in church, but in your personal life, do you think if you have that type of situation with another person that for whatever reason, do you do we or do y'all believe that God brings people in and out of our lives mm -hmm. at different times and in different places and different circumstances? Mm -hmm. And but so if that person is brought into your life in a time, place, and circumstance, and it's one of those clashy things, do you think that could change? Yes. yes. How, Carolyn? Like in our family right now, we have a big grid mm -hmm. that we can't cross over right now, right. and there's nothing we can do mm -hmm. at this point. The only thing would be God. That's right. Yeah. With and we can absolutely be assured, no, no question, that he hears, he knows, he understands everybody's perspective, not just one perspective, not just the prayer. You know, it's not just he's not sitting up there saying, oh, okay, uh, Don's asking for this. So I'm going to make sure she gets everything on her list because she's asked. When somebody else that I might be asking about, especially if it's my family, they may not be praying at all. They may not even be trying at all. They may not even think God is even important. You but wonder, he's... You wonder why. We does, do wonder does why. Does he really care? Why did it happen? Mm -hmm. He does really care, and we don't know why it happened. It takes a while to understand what he's doing. If ever. We might not ever in this world ever really understand. Mm -hmm. And one thing she references in the book, I never thought of it this way before, but she talks about Moses when God was talking to him. He told him, I'm going to put you in the cleft of a rock, and the cleft of a rock is like a rock's been naturally cut out. Mm -hmm by wind and water or whatever. And the cleft is a place that you could go in in a storm. A lot of times people would go into them and they'd pull their animals in mm -hmm. until the storm passed. It wasn't big, it wasn't comfortable, it wasn't heated, it wasn't lighted, but it was a place where you could sit until the storm passed. And he said, once I pass by you, I'm going to let you come out and you're going to see my back. You're going to see the back of God. I don't know what that would have felt like. I don't know what Moses, I don't know what he saw. But I know that he was in that place of protection for as long as God wanted him to be in there, because God wanted him to be in there, in the place God wanted him to be, alone or with the people that God wanted in there with him. I don't know if he was fed in there. I don't know if he had water in there. I don't know. 
but I know that God promised him he was going to keep him in that place of safety until he passed. And once he passed by, that Moses was going to be able to see God's back. And think about that. What's a, I know Steve, if he was here, he'd answer it right off the bat, but what's something that we tell someone when they're our friend and they're going through a trial? We got your back. We got your back. I got your back. And think about that in relation to God allowing Moses to see his back. We don't do a whole lot with our backs, do we? We lift. We use them as, as muscle bases and things like that. And they are structurally, they're holding up your whole body. But having the back or being able to see the back of someone means that they trust you enough that they're not going to have to be face to face. Anybody ever had somebody that they didn't trust standing there looking at them? Oh, oh I, I, oh, come walk with me sometime, especially <laughs> ER at night. No, yeah, uh, yeah, I did. Okay, I'm telling you, there, mm -hmm. there's some of them. I get this, I had this feeling, I get yeah. this feeling, and I know it's God. I've learned over the years, and I'm like, she's there, I'm here. How you doing? You know, I'm not going anyplace because I don't trust. I don't trust that she's got it together enough in her right mind, you know, that she's not going to grab me at, by the throat or try to flip me around and get me in her arm and shake me or something, you know. <laughs> so, but if, if I trusted her, I would not be afraid at all to turn my back on her. Ever, anybody ever had a woman that you're married and you got a man and there's a woman coming into play mm -hmm. and you say I don't I wouldn't trust her when I was standing there looking I wouldn't trust the brother that's standing I would never her. turn my back on her and especially guess what? I don't I'm always standing there looking at her but around my you know around your husband uh, there's there's some women that I just absolutely will not be I, I will not go that step I won't put him in that situation not good for me to be in that situation because I don't need to go to jail at this point <laughs> in life. And I don't want to put her in that situation. You know, think about that. I don't want to put her in that situation. But seeing, trusting someone enough to let them have you pass by and all you're dealing with is their bathroom. I think that was a big statement of trust for Moses. I think God was really putting a lot of confidence in him at that point. And some of them may not be able to handle it like Moses either. No, of course not. Most people, I don't think, would be able to handle that. Being in that cleft, you know, there's a song, He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a wide, empty land. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock and covers me there with his hand. That cleft has to be a scary place sometimes. It would be scary. I, I don't like dark, cavey type things. You know, I go into them with, with the grandkids. If that's what we, we're going to do, that's what we're going to do. But Grammy's like, fine. Take it down. Yeah. Got yeah. <laughs> in the ceiling of the caves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That don't really scare me because that won't bother you. Spiders will jump right on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But boys like caves. They love that kind of stuff. So I learned a long time ago I have to put some of my personal fears aside to be able to experience things with my boys and now my grandkids, my grandsons. But think about that. Think about the back in relation to bridges. You've got an entry point at the bridge and you got an exit point at the bridge. Both sides. If it's a road bridge, you usually have it coming and going from both sides. Anybody ever been on a bridge that was just wide enough for one car? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happens with oncoming traffic? What has to happen? Somebody got to back up. Somebody's, Somebody's either got to stop and pull a little bit to the side so you can get by or you have to stop and pull over so they can get by. 
So even though it's not a dual passing bridge, you're still using good bridge manners to be able to accomplish the goal, which is what? Get to the other Get side. Get to the other side. So even though we have things in our lives that we feel like are insurmountable, there's nothing we can do, it's hopeless. Anybody ever said that about something in their life? I have. Multiple times. 99% mm -hmm. of the time, too, it's family relationships. Mm -hmm. It's the ones closest to you, the ones you love the most, the ones you care about the most. But I will tell you, one in particular, it was years, years and years and years of praying. And he had gone, he had been in the uh, National Guard and he had left his hat at the house when he moved out. Wasn't living right, wasn't even trying to live right. Had very little communication with us, which was, and it was very metered communication. So I was cleaning out some stuff and I found this hat. And I said, you know what? God, I'm going to pray about him. It had his name on it. It's one of his military hats. And I put that hat in my pillowcase. And every night when I woke up, I prayed specifically for him while I was touching that hat. Years. It was a long, long time. I'll, I'll never come back to Covington. That's what we have been told. I'll never come back to I hate Covington. You know, I don't want to be around all my friends. Okay? Last year, he and his fiance bought the house that my husband and I moved out of. And they're 15 minutes from us here in Covington. And the one that didn't want anything to do with us or acted like, you know, we were a bother to him. He, he, he'll, he calls us all the time just to check up. Y'all okay? Everybody okay over there? Yeah, we're, we're fine. Okay, well, I was just checking. Want to make sure everybody's okay. And I'm like, is that, was that me? Did that have anything to do with me? Did I change? Did I? Maybe, maybe I did, and I just don't see it. Maybe his dad changed. Maybe his brothers changed. Maybe everybody changed but him, you know? But he's the one that moved back here. And he's the one, he also thinks that his dad and I may have dementia. <laughs> <laughs> and that we're not capable of rational thought like turkeys going outside and putting our head up in the rain or something. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. He's he's back in relationship. He was the one that that knocked the bridge down or was trying to knock the bridge down. And it was only God. Now, what was my responsibility in that? Did I have any action? Did I have anything that I physically could do? Was there anything I could say to him? Was there anything I could spend on him? Was there anything I could do that was going to be really effective at any type of change within him? He probably knew that you cared. Mm -hmm. You were praying for him, but you weren't writing him all the time saying, come on, you got to do this. You gotta mm -hmm. do You're not going to bow down to him. So, yes. It wasn't even a bow down thing. It was just like, like she was saying, I didn't know what else to do. I've done everything I needed to do. Yeah, but yeah. God knew. God and he knew. Was working through you. God knew. And God also knew him in the dark pit of night, staggering home from yet another bar. You see what I'm saying? He saw that. And God knew. And through time and however God decided. And you weren't jumping on him all the time, you know, and, and say, see here, see here. I wanted to. I'm, I'm a sure. I'm a type A personality. I mean, I like I like to be in charge. I like, okay, here's what you're gonna do, here's what you're gonna do, here's what you're gonna do. Huh. But God knew what he needed as much as he knew what we needed. And prayer. Prayer.
prayer, 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 and more prayer. And giving him up to God. Giving it up. Saying, I've done everything I know to do. I've, 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 I've tried everything, every book I could read about, it, anything I could think of. But I'm giving it to you, and I'm going to leave it with you. And I'm going to continue to ask, because he doesn't care how many times we ask. We can ask a million times. He doesn't care. You know, he just, I, sometimes I would think he, in the middle of the night, he'd be like, oh, here she is, waking me up again. So that, yeah, Donna, I know, I know, I know. But he doesn't think like that. He doesn't box us in to those, those little boxes and frames. He doesn't, he doesn't require us to bring the materials for the bridge or to bring the workmen for the bridge or to do the planning or the zoning or the traffic planning or the asphalt or the concrete or dig the pillars in the water so that the bridge will be stable. He doesn't require any of that of us. All he asks us to do is give it to him and then let his will be done and you find thankfulness. I would thank him over and over and over and over. I thank you for hearing me. I thank you for what you're doing in our son's life. I thank you for keeping him safe. Anybody ever had the the night fear of getting a phone call? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be like, okay, it's three o'clock, the bars are closed. Okay, it's 3.15. Okay, it's 3.30. He should be home by now, even if he staggered and prayed that he didn't drive. You know, that that fear is unbelief. That fear is, I don't trust that God knows what he's doing. He doesn't require all of the elements to build a bridge for a bridge to be built. All he wants us to do is just trust him and ask. And if you have, he tells us in his word, if you have the faith of a child, think about your little kids. Your little kids trust you. They do. They trust you. You reach out that you're walking, you're walking down the sidewalk, you get right across the street. You reach that hand out for that kid. Nine times out of ten, that kid's gonna reach up and take your hand, aren't they? Because they trust you. They trust that you know how to get them across the street better than they know how to get across the street. You know, your marriage relationship is built a lot on trust. Sometimes it's harder than others. Especially when they, once again, you know, I forgot, you had one job there. <laughs> I, you had one thing to do today that needed to be done. I forgot. Okay, he gets busy. He gets busy in his own world and he sometimes forgets, you know, that he has to pick up slack for me that I can't do because I'm not there. I'm not able to stop. I'm not able to take a phone call. You know, when I'm up to here in a pussy wound, I can't, un I can't undress and go take a phone call. You know, I have to just keep moving forward. But he doesn't require us to be master bridge builders. All he requires is that we trust him, that he knows the type of bridge that we need, how to make it happen, when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen. And it may not happen visibly to us in, in this lifetime. We have to trust even unto death. I mean, Jesus, the scripture says Jesus humbled himself to death, even death on the cross. Was Jesus in charge of death? Absolutely. He could have held his hand up at any time and said, mm -mm, nope. And he didn't. He humbled himself to the will of God. To death, even death on a cross, which at the time in that area of the world was the most horrific type of death that could be imagined. By the way, it did not originate with the Romans. If you ever get a chance, look up where it came from. It, it actually came from some of the, the desert tribes, which are now 
geographically pretty close to the same area that Hamas is in. Ooh. Really Ooh. scary when you think about it. Yep, did not originate with the Rome. They were copycatting that. Mm -hmm. They introduced the deal. They introduced the nails. They didn't use nails. Normally they didn't. No. Mm -mm. Normally they usually just hung them by ropes and they basically suffocated. So the Romans introduced the nails as another thing to torture, another torture mechanism. But crucifixion did not originate with the Romans. A lot of stuff the Romans did didn't originate with the Romans. They were the greatest army on the face of the earth and they conquered all kinds of people and they learned all the good stuff and the bad stuff from the people that they conquered. Okay, so we ready? Any any comments about bridges? Anything anybody wants to to discuss about bridging? Bridging hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. Keeping your mouth shut hard sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, I this yeah. morning. <laughs> yeah, I I hum a lot. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because sometimes it's really, really hard to not interject my will via my mouth into a situation. <laughs> and just let it die. You're laughing because you're, you're worse than I am. You're more you know than it. I am. I will mean, tell you in a heartbeat. Um, mm -hmm. It should be. No, it should be safe. That's why right. we get more. mad at me. <laughs> we did this before. Try, try going this big one. Just fix this big one. Day. I thought when you did it. Mm -hmm. Try that very first one again. Maybe we just didn't wait long. Mm Well, this has been, this whole technology thing has been 
such a I've been really to share screen. Share screen. Hmm? share screen. The video is not playing though. We're trying to get it's the video to play first. Right. No, you don't play first. You hit share screen, then go to the screen where the video is, make sure the sound is on, and then I wouldn't work fine not you. seven try seven because we should have we should have one more video after this according to what I looked at in the book there is it is sharing it's, it's playing some who's playing in yeah, try seven. <laughs> is it a download or is it an actual DVD? It's a DVD. Feature. Yeah, because you see, once you push that DVD and hit start, it usages go. It wouldn't work the other night. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Shoot it down, close that down, and I'll take it out. You see it right there at the bar. You see it down around the bar. Yeah. That DVD. Usually, when you click on the DVD mm -hmm. icon, it starts playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got power to be twice. Loading something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can run out that earlier and go and see if you can want an ATV out there. but if it's going to be any of them it should end in the dot no matter which one it is it should end in the dot Mm 
Oh, you watched all those crazy things you did the other day that drove us crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, it wouldn't take nothing. But yeah, I don't know you said she got all the material on the DVD. She inserted it. Mm -hmm. It should pop up immediately and say, you know, a device is connected, DVD, and play. It we did that the other night with the movie, it, and it, it got the DVD in. It's not even playing, playing on your play. computer, is it? It's not playing on the computer either. We had to take the DVD out and use uh, YouTube. Uh, right. Well, it, now it's saying no media available. No type of media. That yeah. just popped up. Yeah. Uh, did did y'all see that too? Yeah, I did. It just would not play the movie that we wanted to play. Yeah. Yeah. It starts and then for some reason it just stops right there. But okay, well, you know what? There's some things we can control. <laughs> There's other things we can't. So, so we tried, and you know what? Um, I'll maybe if I get bigger, I'll just bring my computer up here and ask him to see if he can get it to play, and then we could just play two or three sessions at one time because they're not long. Mm -hmm. They're really not long. Okay, anybody have anything they want to give input into and do, anything you picked up on in any of these chapters that were particularly meaningful to you? Well, I'm going to ask a question. Mm -hmm. I know it's a biblical question, but why did God only want Moses to see the back of him and not his face or his heart? Well, the scripture tells us that no man can see God and live. Right. It is in scripture. They yeah. can see and because of his glory and his holiness, that to look on him face to face would be more than what we as human beings could handle. So I think he did it as, again, another protective mechanism for him. He put him in the hiding place. We told him he was going to cover him with his hand. He was going to keep him safe in there. And when he had fully passed by, he would know, Moses would know, and that he could see his back, but he couldn't see his face. Now, we'll see God when we go to heaven. When we get to heaven, we will absolutely see him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you not want Moses to see his face? You know, so well, because of that. If you go back to in the Old Testament, like the tabernacle and all that, all of that was specifically designed so that the glory, the, it's called the Shekinah glory of God, could come down to the people, but so that they purposely could not mm -hmm. see him. There was only one priest a lot allowed into the Holy of Holies, only one, and he was a high priest. He was he was also had to be prepared to die. Because yeah, and it was he, only a certain, certain number of time. times a yeah. year. Mm -hmm. When he would go into the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant and all that was, they would tie a rope around his leg. In they case he died while he was in there, because they couldn't even go in again. Oh, he oh, had to be pulled out. Okay, for that, mm -hmm. I, I can see that. And that was just be, if he did not follow the exact steps that God told him to follow, and happened to get a glimpse, a visual glimpse of God's glory, he would have died on the spot. They were moving the Ark of the Covenant from one place to another. And they were specifically told it could not be touched. Don't touch it. It was handled on bars. And two men were, it, it started to fall, and two men reached up, and it was innocent. I mean, that was, they were, innocent. They were just trying to steady it, and they got right on the spot. Because they, because God's law is God's law. And he doesn't. He doesn't have all this. You know how when you go to court, you have all these if, ands, or buts? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have all those if, ands, or buts. You have to swear on it in the Bible. His law is his law. And if he tells you something, he means what he says, and he means it the first time he says it. Who gives the powers of water down? It, like not at all. So not watered down in any it. way. Yeah, the power of God was there. The biggest questions I ever had was why in the world did God not want Moses to see his face? Mm -hmm. What is that? Because to see it, it would yeah. have been too much for him, mm -hmm. and he would have died. It would have overcome him, and he would have died. And that wasn't God's will for him at that time that he died. 
it's like having a psychiatric patient. You show them something and then they go berserk and then they have a heart attack and die. Mm -hmm. But then you can show the average person that it's not a schizophrenic something and they be like, they go on the next step. Yeah. But I, I'm confident that in Moses' case and in the case of those two men, God knew what he was doing. He mm -hmm. knew their motive. He knew the purity of their motive. Whatever reason he had for striking them, he had a reason for it. If it was for nothing else than to teach the other people that they had to obey him. Y'all have kids, if you've had kids. You know, sometimes those kids just have to obey you because that's what they have to do for their own safety. And that was one of the hardest things I think about raising kids is prompt and immediate obedience. They had to understand to obey you promptly and immediately, sometimes because it was a safety issue and it was their safety that you were concerned about. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to teach kids. It's a hard thing to teach me. I mean, it is. I'm not kidding you. I'll go into town with Larry Burton. And, you know, he's the outside of, on the sidewalk kind of guy, you know, protecting this woman. Okay. In areas of town that he's never been in. And I have had no problem at all going down there and jumping up because I've got lots of folks around me. If I have to go, if they call me down there, there's a reason. And there's going to be police, fire, and a whole bunch of other things down there. So I don't, I don't think like that. He's got to protect me, you know. Sure as anything, we'll walk up to a, a light, and the light has had the walk sign, and I put my foot off the curb, and then it changes, and here he is jerking me back. Don't walk. <laughs> you know, I see that sign, and I'm like, Larry, it was fine. We could have made it across. <laughs> well, I could have, but I'm not sure that you could have. <laughs> you know? So you, sometimes it's for our own good. You know, sometimes it really is for our own good. Larry would never go against the light. I would smack the guy's <laughs> car that pulled up and what are you doing? Are you an idiot? You want to speak <laughs> So he's, you know, he's he's doing it for my protection. And God does things for our protection. God does things to change us as much as he does the people that he's worked that seem to be your adversary at the time or that you're in an adversarial relationship with. You know, people people do not generally change if only good things are happening to us. They just kind of tend to go with whatever works for them. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions? Anybody want to share anything else? She looked it, to me. She's overviewing some of the things she missed in her life through her children, mm -hmm. and yeah. then going and she's reflecting with her kids that they they're learning to do things. It reflecting back to some of the things she missed and she didn't see. And she's talking about how you know, minor things for the kids and how they flow and when they did mm -hmm. and how amazing it is. And these are things she missed as a kid. And now she reflects with them. Well, from just from what I gathered, her life was pretty much mm -hmm. overshadowed. Yeah. Her her life with her parents was pretty much overshadowed after her sister died. There wasn't a whole lot of affection yeah. or anything mm -hmm. like that with her. And uh, one thing that just I, I had to re stop and then go back and read it again was when she was talking about the cutting yourself. That part was extremely. I funny. have never understood that, and you see it all oh, the time. My granddaughter used to do it. I mean, all the time. And the part where she talked about the old man touching her, that uh -huh. part really got me. Uh -huh. I'm just like, what? And it's it really hard. It brings back a lot of bad memories from when I was younger. So I'm not going to go into detail, but I have special memories of things happening to me when I was little. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to ask. And Corinne, if it's any consolation to you at all, if you survey the population as a whole, somewhere between 40 and 45% of the females have had something happen to them mm -hmm. when they were too young to be of age of consent. 
interestingly, males are in the 30%. So it's it happens to males and females. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone in that. And I think what she was trying to get across there is no matter how horrible it is, no matter what that memory evokes, no matter what negative emotions you have, God is still there to handle mm -hmm. to handle those emotions and to help you handle those emotions. And again, you know, our will is vengeance. Our will is attack. Our will is, you know, I'd like to see him hanging from a tree. And but God has his will and his ultimate judgment is what's going to prevail in every situation. Thank God he doesn't thank God that sin is sin to God and that he doesn't look at my sin that's forgiven. Because even though, of course, I'm not an old man touching a little girl, yeah. I've sinned horribly too. And he he sees that from both standpoints. Do I or think that know. a perpetrator can be forgiven? I do. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't leave him in with my kids. Uh, and I wouldn't put them in the Sunday school. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put them in as a Sunday school teacher. I beg to differ. They can be. Why, Anybody why can do be you think, Why do you differ? Uh, what do you think is different? There's something off. Mm -hmm. There's something off. But they're forgiven just as much as we are. Mm. Yes, they are. He died that may be all our sins. that may be right, but mm, I still have my Ellen's a lot like me because of her her personality and her take charge and her fix it personality. I'm just glad I'm not the judge. Everybody be in jail. Everybody be in jail. <laughs> We'd have firing squads on a daily basis. Okay, next group. Come on, yep. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> And that you're right, there is something off. What's off is sin. Mm -hmm. Sin that came into the world. And the sin is sin to God. God does not have degrees of sin. Sin is sin. And sin is against his will. And its total purpose is to separate us from him. To separate the old her from him. And to separate me from him by wanting to totally condemn. Would, now, would I sit on a jury and find that man guilty? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I certainly would. And if in the state of Georgia, if that was a death penalty, yep. and it was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that I, that was I, I, I bring in myself. And, but that's why I'm so thankful that we have a savior yeah. because we're so imperfect that we're not capable yeah. of passing true judgment, eternal judgment. We can pass earthly judgment based on the laws of the land and societal norms. And, you know, you know, I have a hard time, and I, I don't talk about this a lot because I don't do it as much anymore, but there's a whole community in DeKalb County of Somali immigrants. And it's a very, very close-knit, very strange the way they practice their average age of their what they term marriage is 12. oh no, no. no. yeah and um, those girls are not caught in the system because they're not in the system they don't go to school they don't go to the doctor they don't go to the hospital unless they're halfway dead and the dad decides she's worth enough to him as a worker for a bride price, you know, to take her to the doctor. Can't it's a totally on. different world compared to our world. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the geography and the population density in a lot of these areas that these folks are from, there's a whole lot more people in those areas who believe the way they do than there are people that believe the way we do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Judeo-Christian morals are on the decline. It's not, it will be, I, I say this and I've said it for many, many, many years. I'm 65. In my lifetime, you will in all probability see either no age of sexual consent 
with children where the age will be lowered to or maybe 10 or 11. Whatever the whatever the most um, attractive age is for the pervs, especially with the boys. Max. The most yeah. attractive person is Max, if you've ever heard mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. I've heard of it, and it's horrendous. They are basically adults attracted to we Adults that believe they are attracted to children naturally. Mm -hmm. And they are, everything that we're hearing on the news about all this, the breakdown in what we would have considered societal norms is all leading up to that as an obstacle and it's going to be knocked down. Just like everything else that we thought mm -hmm. of, what is biblical versus what is societally accepted. Well, yeah. All the bad stuff that we saw in the Old Testament about Sodom and Gomorrah, it's like you're seeing it happen in all these societies around the world. You turn on TV and watch it happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can watch movies on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> Oh, no, so man, really, I'd go to prison and wear orange and then kick out the warden and run. <laughs> well, I have seen just things that I, I, I'm just like, and I have to be like so stoic. You know, I have to be un, unemotional, can't show emotion, which is incredibly hard. But Am I going to help anybody by getting all up in their, you know, getting up in their mm -hmm. face and, no. you know, give me a knife? I know how They're to forgive. I actually like we did. Are, and we have to learn to forgive exactly. like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy, but you, we have to learn to forgive like that. I worked in urology one time and I actually learned how to um, surgically excise testicles in a penis. Did you, you know, know you can, a man can live without it? He can. Mm -hmm. They can live. They can void mm -hmm. just fine. I mean, it's a little difficult, but they can live without. I'd be like, scalpel. Don't be doing this anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But that's, you know, that's why we are not the ultimate judge. Because mm -hmm. we judge with humanity. Right. We judge. He judges with divinity. And there's a huge difference between the two. So, I know. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I totally get it. It's just something that you, you need to pray about because it'll be a release for you. It's a huge responsibility. Yeah. It's a huge amount of responsibility to think of yourself as your judge. Once you let that go, it doesn't mean you accept it. doesn't mean, like I said, you wouldn't find them guilty if you were on a jury. It doesn't mean you wouldn't jump to defend, physically defend a child if you had to. Of course you would. I would too. But it releases you from that human responsibility of being the judge. And you, you give it to God and let him deal with it. Because you, I can't, if I had to deal with it, I got a nine millimeter bullet with your name on it. With my name on it? No, with <laughs> his name on it. You know, that's what I would be saying. Yeah. If you let me to judge, uh -huh. I wouldn't judge. I'd just take them all out to the field and just mm -hmm. one by one. Bam, 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 mm -hmm. bam, bam, and bam. Which, you know, based on our sin, that should happen to us, too. Yep. So mm -hmm. We're no different than they are. Even though we've not done that. We're no we've different. We've done other things. We're a sinner so. just like they are. Well, we might be sinners, but they're certain. There, I, I'm, there's I'm, 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 I know. Of a sin. I, I, there is. There is. It's like, really hard, Ellen. I know. I've been <laughs> there. I've been through the whole mental process, the exact same thing that you're going That's through. Right. It's very, very, very hard. And I'm not going to tell you, it never rears its ugly head in me again. It does. It does. It it comes up in me not as frequently as it used to because uh, I'm kind of I'm trying to give that part of my will over to God too. And I work at it. I have to work at it. I have to just say, okay, I can't do anything about that, but I can do something about this. Let me ask you. And, and I'm just throwing it out there to you. Let's just say hypothetically, it was your son that was the perp. Mm -hmm. And he gets hurt. And he gets brought in to the hospital. And I'm the one that has to take care of him. Would you accept me saying I'm not going to take care of him because he's a sexual predator? Yeah, I would. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, I would. Maybe you would. 
because this is this is my thing. And this is what I taught my kids, my nieces, my nephews. There is, you know what? If, if, if you grow up and you want to be that way, then do it where I can't see it. Well, if you're my that, child, you do it. Guess what? I'm done. I can't. Mm -hmm. But what if you have but, a job where you have to take care of? Yeah, that's why. That's why I, that's why I don't have a job like that. I wanted to be an attorney, but when they said I, they told me that I could not be biased. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, then I'm not being an attorney. Yeah. Because there's you no be way. Attorney, I'll tell you what. There'll be no I'd way I would represent. I'd hire you. I'd hire you in a minute. <laughs> I've actually had a few judges who's told me, hey, you want to come and uh, do these cases for me? Ellen would do the reduced cost plan. Yeah. Oh, he's guilty. Let's blow him away. Bye. <laughs> Send it down. All right. Well, let's have our closing prayer and then we'll do our fun and then we're done for the week. I appreciate you ladies coming out. I've enjoyed this so much. I've enjoyed this. Even though I'd already read the book once, I really enjoyed going through it again at a, a little bit of a meter pace and taking it in little small bites and then going back to the study guide. And I'm not going to tell you I do every question in the study guide. I don't. But I, the ones I do, I have a tendency to kind of say, say hey, you know, I would have not thought of that that way from reading that passage. All right, any other prayers that we need to offer? Father God, we come before you. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness, God. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you that in spite of ourselves, in spite of all of our, our prejudices, all of our things that we hold on to, in spite of the fact that we know the best thing to do in a whole lot of different circumstances, Father, that you still love us, God, and that you still take us right where we are and you work with us through every situation in our life and that we can count on you, God. We can plan on you. We can call on you and we can be absolutely 100% assured that you are with us, that you hear us, that you know all about us and that you genuinely care, God. And I thank you for that on behalf of all these women. We ask that you go with us through this week, God, that you watch over us, you guide us, you direct us, you tape our mouths closed when they need to be taped, God, and that you help us to represent you in the way that you would have us represent you according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. This goes to our closing prayer. I would like to stand, but we did, but you don't have to. No. <laughs> this, and I'm telling you, this song, if you don't know, one, oh, another thing she says in that, in the book that is so true is the word of God, repeating that word of God, even if you only know Jesus wept, the shortest verse in the Bible. If that's all you know, say it. And say it over and over and over. But Scripture also tells us that there is no other name in heaven and earth whereby we might be saved except the name of Jesus. So this song is only one word. So if you can't remember anything else, if you wake up in the middle of the night, Carolyn, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're so troubled, just say the name of Jesus and just keep saying it over and over and over again. Say a scripture if you can remember. Say what you can remember. Nobody's looking. God's not sitting there saying, oh, she missed that word. <laughs> right? That's 10 points. If you just remember a part of a scripture, just say the part you remember. Because the word of God is quick and it's powerful, like a two-edged sword. I studied this too. Two-edged sword. Now that is a Roman mm -hmm. A two-edged sword, they honed them. You know, a sword is honed at an angle. It's forged at an angle. So each edge has like a triangle on, you know, the, the mm -hmm. sharp yep. part is the top of the triangle. A two edge sword, so barbaric, but remember their, their objective was not to just wound you. Their objective was to kill you. So a two edge sword, when you shove it in, it cuts top and bottom. Then they would turn their hand just a slight degree 
and it cuts coming out to it. Mm -hmm. So they would sever arteries going in and out, yes. up and down. So the word of God is quicker and more powerful than a two-edged sword. 